Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Doc Lando and Hamish K. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Over the weekend, Elon was pushing for more nuclear production, citing this is critical to national and international security. Now, unfortunately at this point, I don't really have an informed take on the topic. Maybe over the next few weeks, I can change that. However, I wanted to ask you guys, just let me know below, nuclear yes or nuclear no if you think the world at scale should make this a priority. And here's Elon's offer. He's seemingly very confident saying, for those who mistakenly think this is a radiation risk, pick what you think is the worst location. I will travel there and eat locally grown food on TV. He did this in Japan many years ago, shortly after Fukushima. Radiation risk is much, much lower than most people believe. This morning, Alex confirmed for us Giga Berlin can start production as planned without any interruption and issue concerning water supply. This coming from Automobile Volca. Having a look at this chart from Clean Technica, the Model Y was the global best-selling electric vehicle for the month of January, selling 32,700 vehicles. And the Model 3 came in a respectable fifth, doing about half of the volume, 15,460. And we should remember Elon's prediction in the spring of 2021 that the Model Y in 2022 will quite likely be the world's best-selling vehicle, so is it on track? Well, from Car and Driver, here is a list of the top 25 best-selling vehicles. Vehicles. Now, Elon did say the best selling car, and the top three places were actually all occupied by trucks. So, in fourth place or first place in terms of cars, the RAV4 sold 407,700 units in 2021. In case you're wondering how high the bar is for all vehicles, including trucks, well, the Ford F Series did 726,000 units last year. So, assuming the RAV4 stays steady, the Model Y would have to sell about 410,000 units this year. Divided by 12, that's about 34,000. 1,100 vehicles per month. So clearly the Model Y is off to a very good start. So yes, there's at least a chance that at the end of this year, we can say the Model Y is the best selling car in the world. I would file this under speculation. However, Marco is saying, from what he's hearing, Tesla is planning a public mega charger network where the first locations could be opened by this summer. This article was getting a lot of traction today as Dan Ives wrote a bit, just saying that the Giga Berlin approval will remove a major overhang from Tesla stock. That's true, but I would add there are still plenty of other pretty significant overhangs. So in the short term, at least patience will be required. There was one very interesting line though. He said many on the street were doubting if Giga Berlin would ever actually open. So if this is true over the next two weeks, we should get some updated models, maybe some increased price targets and presumably some increased buying from Wall Street, which at the very least should help to provide a bit higher of a floor for Tesla stock price as we wade through all of this macro uncertainty. Just a quick note on oil because it does have big implications. This is West Texas Intermediate Crude, which is the benchmark for the United States. So from the time when Russia invaded Ukraine, which is this yellow line, the price has gone up about 30% or $28 per barrel, trading at around 120 right now, down from highs earlier today of around 130. And here you see a very similar story for Brent Crude Oil, which is the international benchmark. Some experts are floating the idea around of $200 per barrel for oil if the US decides to ban imports of Russian crude. Looking at this chart, the orange line shows crude oil price per gallon and there's 42 gallons per barrel. So to get the price per barrel, you just multiply that number by 42. But all you need to know is if oil approaches $200 per barrel, that would be $4.76 on this chart for the orange line, which of course would be a historic high. And of course, depending on your location, this could push seven, eight, nine, ten dollars per gallon of gas. As with oil prices per barrel at $120, we're already seeing in some places gas hit $7. And if you missed it, even Elon said we need to increase oil and gas output immediately. Extraordinary times demand extraordinary measures. And what I think is a pretty interesting tidbit, Ukraine is the source for 70% of the world's output of neon. Neon is the critical gas that runs the lasers that are needed to manufacture semiconductor chips. So plenty of people talking about oil, gas, nuclear, and wheat, and for good reason, but there's plenty of other risk factors here that not a lot of people are talking about. In response to a tweet from Sam talking about how crazy it is the amount of time we spend sitting at red lights, Elon said, maybe Tesla should make an AI vision device that plugs into these legacy traffic lights. It could just look at traffic automatically and maximize throughput. So in case you're not familiar right now, some lights don't have any detection and just run on timers. 
Some lights are centrally monitored and are controlled by computers to coordinate in real time based on the traffic. Now others do already have detectors like lasers, but one of the most common is an inductive loop. It's just a coil of copper wire embedded into the surface of the road that detects if a car is waiting. To me though, this potential new product for Tesla seems like another game of data gathering to basically tune the algorithms over time and they could actually use this data for the future boring locations once the obvious locations are already deployed. And long-term, it's almost impossible to think about this without considering how this new AI solution on traffic lights would in theory interact with FSD and autonomy. And on that note, I think it's important that we get this sorted out before we reach full autonomy. As Elon has said many times, he's confident FSD will drastically worsen the traffic situation. So what do you guys think? Will Tesla actually make a product like this? Yes or no? Real quick, did you guys know that one of the sponsors I really enjoy sharing with you guys, masterworks.io, is already worth over $1 billion? And Deloitte, the accounting firm, is saying that by 2026, Six, they expect the fine art market to grow by $900 billion. Masterworks allows investors like you and I to invest in the fine art market via fractional share ownership. Today, I wanna show you the behind the scenes of some of the benefits you get when you sign up with Masterworks using my link in the description below. All you have to do is click right here, skip the wait list. Then enter some basic information and click request invitation. For investor profile, just let Masterworks know about how much you would like to invest over the next 12 months. And as I used to like to say to clients, when is the best time to invest? Well, when you have the money. When you sign up using my link, Masterworks will give you a free phone call with a market expert. And this phone call will teach you everything you need to know about how to use Masterworks. And more importantly, they'll teach you about the entire art market, different artists and the cultural significance. So if you have no idea where to begin, this is the the best way to get started. And once you're in, you can start browsing for your first piece of art. So let's just say you're a Picasso fan. Masterworks gives you a ton of information to make this process very easy and enjoyable. You can either hold your shares until Masterworks decides to sell the artwork, or you can sell sooner on the secondary market. Contemporary art prices have outpaced the S&P 500 total return by 164% from 1995 to 2021. So you can use the link in the description below or the QR code right on the screen and find out for yourself why so many investors are so excited about masterworks.io. It should come as no surprise, but Tesla has listed 50 plus new positions for Giga Berlin. Right now there's around 3,000 employees and we know in phase one they'll hire up to 12,000, so plenty of hiring to be had at Giga Berlin. These trip chowdery notes make me chuckle every time. I don't know what this guy's doing, but apparently he's been doing these rounds of checks and based on his most recent one, he thinks quarter one is going to be massive. His reasoning, he thinks Model S Plaid deliveries will be up about 15%. He said the Model S Plaid has high margins and today we also saw Model X Plaid on the shipping truck. So with this being his reasoning, I would not put much stock into this. However, on that Model X note, we got some new images of the Model X Plaid and this vehicle in particular has the plaid badge, so it should be one of the newest vehicles, but these headlights look like the older version or the non-matrix LED headlights, so I'm not confident yet that the Model X has been switched over to the new headlights. And here's the shot of the plaid badge. And some other images were going around of this blue Model X plaid. This one had the word plaid, not the plaid badge, and these lights look to be the older version as well, but let me know what do you guys think. Ryan on Twitter said, FSD Highway is by far the inferior your code and needs a ton of work to which Elon said yeah and on that point Elon said we're almost at the point where interventions are so rare on city streets we can turn our attention to applying the code to highways no point in doing so until passing that threshold. So what this means is that if Tesla decides to keep FSD V11 for the single stack neural net, that will mean Tesla has much confidence in city streets and now they'll be applying that code to the highway version, which means you should see a significant improvement to the performance and hopefully this phantom braking will be handled once V11 arrives if Tesla goes that route. A quick note here on Polestar. So if you remember a few weeks ago when I called it Polestar and got called out for it, I was like, you know what? I need to spend some time diving into this company and fast forward a few weeks and I have to say, this is one of my favorite cars, the Polestar 2, 
and favorite companies, one that I am now rooting for as I've been looking for a company other than Tesla that I can support and enjoy following. So I think over on Patreon this week, I will do a deep dive video to bring you up to speed going from zero to 100 to understand this company and why I'm so excited about it. But for today, just a few quick updates. So this Polestar 3 is actually going to be a crucial vehicle for Polestar as it will be the first car built in the United States and it'll be their first entry into the SUV market. The Polestar 3 will be built in Charleston, South Carolina at a plant shared with Volvo. It's going to be the first true clean sheet battery electric vehicle built from the ground up using its own architecture. And yes, it will be powered by LiDAR from Luminar and it will use NVIDIA chips. It will also use the SPA2 technology, which for Polestar is scalable production architecture, which in the future should help to enable autonomous driving. And after watching a ton of content on the Polestar 2 and seeing it get excellent reviews from some of the best reviewers in the business, I'm very excited about this company and the future that it has. But like I said, we'll get more into this over on Patreon. In case you missed it, Biden did indeed say Tesla yet again. New electric vehicle production. Tesla, our nation's largest electric vehicle manufacturer, to innovate and, and, and inspire younger companies like Rivian. GM is building a $393 million cathode active material facility in Quebec, Canada with a partner. This partner is POSCO Chemical, and they will process material for GM's Altium batteries for the United States factories. POSCO will be the majority owner of this facility, and the plant is scheduled to begin production the first quarter of 2025. Ford has stopped taking orders for the premium and California Route 1 trim levels, because of high demand. So they clearly need to get that facility in Mexico humming as soon as possible. That's gonna do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.